Hi, I'm James Bruce, welcome to Tabletop Dungeon, and today I'm going to be reviewing the biggest game I own. This is Gloomhaven, a sort of RPG, sort of card game, mostly dungeon crawler. Let me tell you what I love and hate about Gloomhaven. Now I have here one of the first editions of the game from the Kickstarter way back when. So yes, this review is about two years late. On the other hand, at least you know it's an in-depth review and not just a first impressions hands-on. Now there are some small differences between the editions, tweaks to the cards, things like that, but nothing major. So what you get if you buy today is gonna be pretty much what I can show you now. So inside this ridiculously large box, you're going to find 30 interlocking double-sided dungeon hex tiles. 17 different character classes, each with their own action deck, stat sheet, modifier deck, and unique miniature. Most of these will be locked for you, except for the starting six 236 enemy standees. Hundreds of terrain overlay tiles for features like rocks and bushes and furniture and treasure chests and doors and traps. Hundreds of items you can purchase and equip your characters with as they level up. A massive book of 94 main quest missions and side quests. Enemy stat cards and envelopes to fit them in. An enemy AI deck for every kind of enemy in the game. And you have loads of little chits for money, for status effects, plus more cards for personal goals, road events, city events, explorer events. There's just so much in here. I don't think I've covered all of it, but Whatever, let's just get on and talk about the game, shall we? Now, since this is a review, I don't want to dwell too much on the rules. However, I should give you a quick overview. It's a campaign legacy style game, a dungeon crawler with RPG-esque elements to it. But the very core of the game, the main mechanism you play with here is actually a hand management card game, eh? So you'd be forgiven for thinking that Gloomhaven is probably an RPG type of game, a dungeon crawler where you roll some dice, move your people on a map, and then roll some more dice to attack the enemies. But actually everything you do is dictated by your hand of cards. Each card has a top and a bottom action, usually along the lines of the top being shoot attack or the bottom being a move action, as well as an initiative value that determines where in the round you'll play. So each round you choose two cards, as well as which of those represents your initiative, then in initiative order, you'll play the top action of one card and the bottom action of the other. Now, if everything goes belly up and the round doesn't play out as you wanted it to, you're not actually locked into your choice of which top and bottom action to perform. So you can instead choose the top action of the other card and the bottom action of that one. You can also choose to perform the basic attack to or move to action instead of whatever special action was listed on the card. The only thing you need to remember is that it has to be the top of one and the bottom of the other. You can't choose to do both top actions, for instance. After playing, most of your cards are sent to your discard pile, and these can be recovered after doing a long or short rest, which is basically passing your turn. Sometimes, however, they'll go straight to your lost pile, which can't be recovered. And every time you do a rest, one of the cards from your discard pile is also going to go into the lost pile. So a key part of this game is hand management, ensuring that you have enough cards left to carry on playing the game. This mechanism acts as a countdown, a timer for you to complete the scenario. And that's basically it. That's the core of the game right there. Once you've completed the scenario, you head back to town, you do some shopping, you do a city event, you level up, and then you can choose to go off on a main mission or to go do a side quest somewhere. So rules aside, this is a review. What do I love about Gloomhaven? Firstly, I love the genuine asymmetry of the character classes. And we're not just talking basic archetypes here of fighter, archer, wizard, that sort of thing. Each character of which you have six starter classes and then a further 11 to unlock as you play the game is genuinely different. They have their own unique play style, their own strengths. Some have entirely new mechanics that they bring into the game. For instance, the Cragheart is a master of environmental manipulation. He's hurtling rocks around, smashing enemies into objects to destroy them, or creating random rock formations all over the map. It's just, it's a really fun class to play. The Tinkerer is primarily a support role, but also has a number of mechanical gadgets that you can summon into play. The Mine Thief is a sneaky little git who runs around stabbing people and manipulating the enemy to do their bidding. Now I could go on, but each character will also be assigned their own random life goal, and once that's been achieved, 
that character will retire and you'll have unlocked a new character class. Now you can keep that goal secret if you like, it doesn't really matter, it's up to you. But that also is going to change fundamentally how you play the game. Your character might be desperate to get cash and it's going to play a bit selfishly. On top of that, each scenario you'll have a random battle goal. It changes every time and it gives you a little bit more variation. And as you level up you'll be making permanent choices of which cards to take forward with your character. Usually each level there are two or three new cards of which you can only choose one to put into your deck. And it's from that deck that you choose the hand that you're going to play each scenario with. And of course you're going to be earning money which you use to buy items further customizing your character. There are a lot of RPG elements in here. Which brings me on to my number two reason of why I love Gloomhaven. The sheer value for money of what you're getting. It's not just limited to what you get in the box, which itself is massive. I'm nowhere near completing it. On top of all that, Isaac, the creator, has released the graphical template files for the, for the maps and the scenarios, so anyone is free to make their own scenarios. The creator himself has released a set of solo scenarios for free. Now that said, even though what you get in the box is ridiculously good value, I also love the fact that it's ready to upgrade. For a start, out of the box you've got unpainted minis, and I would strongly suggest you go ahead and paint those. I've also printed a bunch of traps and environmental bits like rocks and columns and bookshelves, just to dress it up a bit. I also found minis for the creature ally summons. Out of the box these are represented by these weird magical chits that don't really look very nice at all, but you should easily be able to find replacement minis for them. These giant rat and rat swarms were a Reaper Bones Kickstarter stuff from ages ago. You've probably got something lying around that you could use. You could replace the cardboard enemies with minis too, but that gets a lot more complicated because there's just so many of them and they all need to be numbered. So I keep it at enemies in card and player or boss characters in painted minis. I've seen others who have 3D printed or plaster cast an entire dungeon. I know there are third party molds you can get for the hex tiles and walls for instance. It's really a game that you can put a lot of effort into if you're someone who tends to be a bit obsessive about that kind of thing. And that's awesome, but you also don't have to if you don't want to. Lastly, I love that it's a cooperative campaign. There's no shortage of competitive board games out there, but not so many cooperative ones, and certainly none on quite this scale. My wife and I have been playing this on and off for a couple of years now. We'll set it up for a couple of weeks, play five or six scenarios, then put it away again until a few months down the line. So how about the bad? What do I hate about Gloomhaven? Well, I kind of alluded to it in that last point. We set this game up for a couple of weeks at a time. The reason being that tear down and set up literally takes forever. This just isn't a game that you can casually take down the pub as if the 10 kilogram box didn't tell you that already. I don't think I can even get everything back in the box at this point. At the very least you do need some plastic tuck boxes to separate out all of the enemy chits. That sort of thing. And probably a larger box to put all of your overlay tiles in. Yes, having a lot of stuff is fantastically good value, but it does obviously make setup of the game so much harder. And on a related note to that, the amount of general overhead that this game needs is quite immense. Out of the box you're going to be managing tens of monsters at a time, using a somewhat clever but very tedious card envelope into which you slot the monster stats card and then place damage tokens when they get hurt. The very first thing that I did was to get a bunch of d20s and d6s to use as health trackers. That helped. But even then each monster has their own unique deck of action cards and when it's their turn you need to combine what's written on the action modifier card with their basic stats which then changes by level and that gives you their move value, their attack value. On top of that you have conditions and status effects that are applied you have shield values that negate damage. Suffice to say I quickly got rid of all that and replaced it with this, a desktop app running on a Windows 10 tablet. This app's called Dungeon Master and it combines the monster decks, it automatically calculates the current level as well as the adjusted value for moves or attacks each turn and it tracks monster health and environmental conditions. I really couldn't play without that now. And that isn't even the only app available. There's also Gloomhaven Helper, I think it's called, which then lets everyone run their own application on their mobile phone and you connect it up to your central server. So yes, it really is that frustrating that you need to go to those sort of lengths to make it a little bit easier. 
and even with those, a single round can still take us 15 to 20 minutes. One other thing to bear in mind is that, like I said, the game mechanic can be a bit deceptive. Even though it looks like a roleplay game, like a strict dungeon crawler of lots of dice rolling, it's not. It's fundamentally a card game. If you go into this thinking, oh yes, this is a value-packed roleplay game in a box campaign system, then I think you'll be disappointed. You need to accept it for what it is. So Gloomhaven is its own thing. It's not a roleplay game in a box. But then neither is it strictly a card game either. It's its its own thing. It's, it's Gloomhaven. Anyway, I hope this review proved useful to you in some way. If you own Gloomhaven, let me know about your experience down in the comments. Do you disagree with anything I said? Do please hit like, it's such a small thing to do, but it really helps to tell YouTube that you'd like this review to be ranked a little bit higher than the others. And do consider subscribing for more board game reviews, terrain tutorials, and more all to do with the tabletop hobby. Thanks for watching.